has life. And I realised in myself that I had a need, and that need came more clear to me as I began to read the Bible. And that need was sin. I had sin in my life. I had, I had wrong, I'd done wrong in my life. And that sin brought a divide between me and God. I wonder, do you count yourself as a good person? Do you count yourself as, as never having sinned or never having wronged in your life? I wonder if, if I was asked you, have you ever lied? Would you be fit to say, no, I've never lied? Have you ever stolen anything? And you'd be fit to say, no, I've never stolen anything. Because really, every one of us has done wrong in our lives. And that wrong separates us from God. But the good news of the Bible is that Jesus came to to bridge that divide he came so that we could have life and that life is found whenever we come in repentance and repentance really is is a biblical word but really means just to turn in the opposite direction a turn towards God and then you have forgiveness for your sins you can have this life that God gives to each one of us in the gospel in Jesus and I found that life whenever I was 18, I realised that I'd done wrong. I, I had I had guilt inside, and that guilt was only satisfied whenever I came and repented of my sin. It was only satisfied whenever I came and realised that I was a sinner. I wonder, have you ever thought of yourself today as a sinner? Do you think of yourself just as, as a good person? What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? When, when come to die is it just going to be we're going to the ground or is there something after this is there is there a place called heaven or a place called hell the bible talks about these things and it says that we can have that life in jesus we can have eternal life in god and that's really what we're here about today we're, we're here to invite you into this eternal life invite you to to have life in jesus if you want to ask us any questions, please come forward or we can come to you as well and we're literally here free. an old man for religion, Christianity, it's for all people. Uh, but of course, um, sadly in our land, it's not even for all people these days. We live in a Christless society. We don't live in a godless society, but a Christless society. Um, last month, I think it brought home to me the reality that the seven million Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And one of the sins of the, in life actually come road is honesty and most people today are very dishonest and there's degrees of honesty but when it comes to life after death I've heard many people tell me there's nothing they are being dishonest because we all fear the afterlife it's the most natural thing in the world. I've never seen anybody get in their coffin, happy, jumping up and down. They're scared stiff. And when a young man says, I'm not scared of dying, well, because he doesn't expect to be dying, that's why. But I tell you what, I said, get to the cancer hospital, and they're laying in their beds in rows and rows. And they're either angry, and angry because they caught cancer, and they can't live long. Just an old one. I went to a, a funeral a few, about a month and a half ago. A non-believer, non-Christian, had nothing. This man was waving goodbye to a coffin as it went behind a curtain for the fire. It to be ashes and that was it, nothing. They were sad, sorrowful. In life they seemed to have had a pretty pleasant life, but that was it. I went to a funeral only last Monday. When the man believed, and you could say he was a fool, but he believed, that his sins were forgiven him, and one day he would go to heaven, not 
on his own ability, but on the ability of Christ who died for him. Now, you'd say, but he's a fool, he, he got a myth. I'll tell you this, his dear wife believes that one day she'll see him again. A month before, none of that family ever believed they'd see their relative ever again. After all, they couldn't. The best they'd get was an urn on the mantelpiece or in the bedroom. Friends, why are men and women so dishonest? Why are they so foolish? God has given you and I a wonderful hope. You and I cannot live this life. We can't live here very long. We're never going to live very long. You know it and I know it. If you got to 25, you've already got a third of your way or a little bit more, a little bit less. The friend. There was a, a very famous Christian missionary years ago. He got an odd name in America called Adonai Judson. And this man lived in Boston. He brought up in a religious family and he had a few of afterlife. But he went to university there in Boston, in Prince County, went to the university, got mixed up with right and wrong people, he decided that he didn't want to trust in God or anything else. He wanted to get the life he wanted. He wanted to get out there in the world and see the things of which he did. That's what he did. And one of his best friends had become very anti-God and he got into lots and lots of trouble. Let's say, well it just so happened that their days parted, they left university and Adonai had got to a stage, he'd fallen out with everybody and do you know what he was going to do in America? He was going to go west, young man, go west. And that's what he did, he went west. And he was on his way, he got near to the Pennsylvania border on his horse, in those days they had horses. And um, he got to a situation that um, he had to stop in a, a hotel for the night. And there was no room left except for one room. And this one room, the, the man at the desk said, 200 years ago, I'm sorry, but there's a man in the next room dying. You can't get him to hospital. Hospital's a long way away, he's dying. And he's in a terrible mess. And you're going to have to put up with it. And he was tired. Well, he goes to bed and all night long he heard this man wailing. No painkillers in those days. He wailed. He was dying. Well, the next morning he goes to pay his bill and as he's going out, the, the undertaker had just arrived. And there, not in a coffin, but in a, in a, a sheet, this man goes past. But as it got to Adonai, who was paying his bill, the sheet moved to one side. And he was shocked. The man laying there was his best friend who four years ago at university and told him there was no God, no nothing. But you know what, friends? That day Adoniah Judson got shook up. But you know what, friends? One of the greatest things can happen is you and I get shook up. And we get real with God. But the fact there is a God. And you and I one day will meet this God and you're going to meet him face to face, except you will be crying out for mercy. You're going to cry with all your energy, you wicked, arrogant, bombastic people. You will do. I promise you, you will do. You will cry out for mercy. And yet, in your life, you've had the opportunity for mercy day in, day out, week in, week out. No other hope. It's all gone. Yes, this gentleman's walking away. It's all over for him. It's already finished for this young man. But older man is going away and he's on his way to a dark, damn, yes, eternity. But he can't even hear. Because, you know, the Bible says in Ephesians, you who were dead in sins and trespasses, unless Christ makes you alive to a gospel this day, you will die without Christ. You will die without him and never knowing the God of glory. Verse. Do you know what friends, as the last speaker said, this is the whole problem. Until you will accept that you are a sinner. Do you know, one of the biggest things about alcoholics, alcoholics Anonymous is this, that those who go to it 
must have to confess they're alcoholics. I had to confess that I was five stone overweight. That's what we sent me to Slimming World. I had to confess it. But you know, friends, we don't like to confess, do we? We can't stand confessing that we're wrong. How many arguments, how many marriages have broken down, how many family relationships have broken down where one would not confess that they were wrong? But you can confess that you're wrong, and most of all, you can confess that you're a sinner. Because God will give you the ability to do it if you so want to. You see, lots of people say, I don't want to be a sinner. I don't want to recognize the bad things. After all, I'm a nice person. Have you ever seen a nice person They're everywhere? I speak to nice people every day. But God says you're not nice. Before a holy God, God says that you are wicked from the end of your feet to the top of your toe. And that's why God had to send his son to die for you. He had to send his son to stand in your place because one day you will have to bear the penalty of every lie you've told. Every time you've looked at a man or a woman with a wrong eye, every time you've been dishonest, every time you've nicked five minutes from your employer, every time you've disobeyed your parents, you're going to have to pay for it. And you know it. And everybody knows it. We all know it. But praise God in heaven above that he didn't leave you and I in that position. He was prepared to offer his son. And see, friends, that's why it's going to be so difficult one day for you, because you will not have any excuses before God. The Bible tells us in Romans that God has handed men and women over to their own debased minds. So, of course, when God hands us over to our own views, we believe our own views to be right. That's why if you come in the open air, I can speak to nice people every day. There's lots and lots of nice people in the world. But friends, unless you confess that you're a sinner, before a holy God, you will not be a nice person one day when God subjects you to right judgment. See, friends, those that are here today are Christians. We're not Christians because we're good people. That's the wonderful thing, is it? We're not Christians because we're good people. One of the wonderful things that happened in our lives, we realised we weren't good people. We realised that if everything we'd ever done was written up on the wall, if it was written up on the shop windows here, everything we'd ever done in our minds and our thoughts, our secret sins, as the Bible says, we would be in big, big trouble. Today, friends, before God, outside of Christ, we're in big, big trouble. And every day that goes by of your life, you're getting nearer and nearer to that day. And sadly, when you die, you will have no opportunity to repent. On the other side of life, there is no opportunity. The die has been cast. It has been said. See, friends, that's why it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful news. You know, the man and woman that's swimming around upstream of Niagara Falls, they don't realise that round the bend is the edge of a waterfall. When they get there, it's too late. Men and women abuse the roads, don't they? They do silly things in the road until they get killed in a road accident. They do silly things. And you and I, friends, are not listening. We do not listen when God speaks. When somebody gives somebody a piece of literature, when somebody offers somebody a way in which they can have their sins forgiven by showing them the true people of God's word. But friends, if we came out one day and asked you to believe in a myth, we asked you to believe in some uh, mystery like King Arthur or Aesop's fables, then we would be rather foolish. But we are introducing you to a historic Jesus. We are introducing you to God in the flesh. God said that he would one day become flesh and live on this earth for a period of time when he could be a saviour. That's why, friends, Christian faith is not like Buddhism. 
by Hinduism. It's based on non-concrete ideas. The gospel is a concrete faith in a concrete man, a man who was surely and truly totally God. That's why the Bible is such a marvellous book, because it doesn't take away all the bad things. The Bible doesn't give us just a one-sided view, it gives us a level view of all things. That's why the Bible tells us about